For centuries, the Indus Valley civilization stood as one of the greatest enigmas of the ancient world. Towering cities with precise grid patterns, advanced drainage systems rivaling those of modern times, and a script etched in stone that no one has ever fully decoded. Flourishing around 2600 BCE, then vanishing mysteriously, as if the earth itself swallowed its legacy whole. Who were these master builders? Where did they come from? And why did such a sophisticated civilization collapse without a trace? Historians speculated. Myths emerged. Some believed they were a lost branch of Mesopotamia. Others thought they were natives of the Indian subcontinent with no outside contact. For decades, archaeology gave us ruins. Pottery, bones, but no real answers. Until now. Buried deep in the remains of ancient Harappa, a tiny fragment of human DNA was recovered, frozen in time, preserved by chance. And with it, science has finally begun to speak where stones remained silent. What secrets lie within this genetic code? And could it finally reveal the true origins of the Indus Valley Civilization? The Indus Valley Civilization, also known as the Harappan Civilization, thrived more than 4,000 years ago, stretching across what is now Pakistan and northwest India. At its height, it covered over one million square kilometers, making it one of the largest early civilizations, rivaling Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt in scale and complexity. Cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa weren't just settlements. They were marvels of urban planning, homes with private bathrooms, public granaries, sophisticated trade networks reaching as far as Central Asia and the Persian Gulf. And yet, unlike its contemporaries, the Indus people left behind no monumental temples, no obvious rulers, and a language system that remains undeciphered to this day. Their disappearance around 1900 BCE triggered one of history's greatest cold cases. Drought, invasion, epidemic, every theory raised more questions than answers. Without written records, the story of the Indus remained locked in the dirt. But now, thanks to revolutionary breakthroughs in ancient DNA extraction, scientists may finally have the tools to open that lock. For the first time, we're not just studying their buildings. We're peering into their blood. What will this new evidence reveal? And will it rewrite everything we thought we knew? It began in a quiet corner of Rakagari, an ancient Indus city buried beneath layers of time in the Indian state of Haryana. Archaeologists had long suspected this site held secrets no other had yielded, but no one expected what would happen next. While excavating a burial pit, researchers uncovered something extraordinary, the near-complete skeleton of a woman, curled gently on her side, untouched for over 4,500 years. Her bones were delicate but intact, and most crucially, her petrous bone, the dense part of the skull near the ear, was perfectly preserved. Why does that matter? Because the petrous bone is nature's vault. It's the one place in the human body where DNA can survive millennia. And this time, it had. With gloved hands and sterilized tools, scientists carefully extracted a tiny sample, hoping against hope that it would contain readable genetic material. If successful, it would be the first ancient genome ever recovered from the Indus Valley civilization. The implications? Massive. For the first time, researchers could compare this ancient DNA with modern and ancient populations across the world and trace the roots of an entire lost civilization. What secrets would the bones of this ancient woman finally whisper? The sample was sent to a state-of-the-art lab specializing in ancient genomics, a painstaking process where even the slightest contamination could destroy everything. Researchers wore full-body suits. The room was pressurized. UV lights sterilized every surface. This wasn't archaeology. It was forensic time travel. For months, the team battled degradation, Noise and fragments so broken it was like trying to piece together a shattered mirror. 
They used next-generation sequencing, scanning billions of genetic fragments, filtering, cross-referencing, and aligning them against global DNA databases. But progress was slow. The tropical climate of the subcontinent had wreaked havoc on most organic material. Earlier attempts at recovering ancient Indus DNA had failed completely. This time, there was no guarantee of success, only patience and a single strand of hope. Then, a breakthrough. Against all odds, researchers reconstructed over 100 unique DNA sequences from the Harappan woman. It wasn't a full genome, but it was enough. Enough to reveal ancestry, migrations, and even connections to other ancient peoples. Patterns began to emerge, connections long suspected but never proven. And then, something no one expected, a signal. Faint but clear. A genetic footprint that pointed to a mysterious population never directly observed before in ancient South Asia. Who were these people? And how were they linked to the very foundation of the Indus Valley? The genetic sequences were compared to hundreds of ancient genomes, from Mesopotamians to Central Asians, from early Iranians to tribal groups across the Indian subcontinent. The data was clear. The woman from Rakigari shared no close ancestry with Mesopotamian or Anatolian peoples, debunking long-standing theories of foreign origin. Instead, her DNA matched most closely with a prehistoric population from the Iranian plateau. But with one critical twist, she lacked any steppe ancestry, the hallmark of later Indo-European migrations. This meant one thing. The Harappans were not outsiders. They were not a foreign elite. They were a blend, descendants of ancient Iranian farmers who had mingled with indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers thousands of years before the rise of the civilization. This fusion created a distinct genetic signature, one found today in millions of South Asians, from Pakistan to southern India. But the most shocking revelation? This unique Indus ancestry appears in no other known ancient genome outside the subcontinent. The people of the Indus Valley were not an offshoot. They were an origin point, a genetic source not a recipient. For the first time, science confirmed what legends had whispered, that the roots of South Asia run deeper and more independently than previously imagined. Picture it. Nearly 7,000 years ago, on the edge of the Iranian plateau, early farmers pushed eastward, crossing mountains and deserts, bringing with them the knowledge of agriculture and animal domestication. They met nomadic hunter-gatherers who had lived in the subcontinent for tens of thousands of years, people of the forests, rivers, and monsoon rhythms. Slowly, over generations, these groups merged, not through conquest, but through coexistence. This fusion gave rise to a new people, adaptable, resourceful, and innovative. By 2600 BCE, they had built sprawling cities of brick and stone. Mohenjo-daro rose beside the mighty Indus River like a puzzle of perfect symmetry. Rakagari buzzed with trade, pottery, and metalwork. From Gujarat to Punjab, a web of civilization spread, connected not by kings or armies, but by shared symbols, weights, and urban logic. They left no palaces, no weapons of war, no grand monuments. Their greatness was in order, in cleanliness, in subtlety. And then, just as suddenly, they vanished. The monsoons shifted, rivers dried, trade collapsed, and without resources to sustain their cities, the people dispersed. But their DNA did not vanish. It traveled, through time, through generations, passed on from mother to child, silently carried in the blood of millions today. The Indus Valley may have crumbled, but its people never truly disappeared. The story of the Indus Valley civilization was never written in books or carved into towering stone. It was written in brick, in silence, and in blood. For centuries, scholars searched ruins for answers, when all along the truth was hidden inside the very people who walk the land today. The woman from Rakagari, buried in dust for millennia, has spoken through science, 
Her DNA has rewritten the origins of an entire civilization, one not born of invasion, but of ancient union, one that shaped South Asia long before borders, languages, or empires existed. This discovery is more than history. It's identity, it's heritage. It's a reminder that some truths lie not in artifacts, but in our very cells. So what else is hidden in ancient bones? What other civilizations still whisper beneath the soil, waiting for science to listen? If you were captivated by this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. We've only scratched the surface. Countless mysteries still lie beneath our feet. Stay curious. Stay questioning. Because sometimes, the past is just waiting for the right moment to speak.